One thing that can make Arduino seem a little overwhelming is the text-based coding you need to write to make the software do anything. The good news is, is that Tinkercad actually does some of that for you through some block programming similar to Scratch or code.org. As you can see here, for example, I have a, uh, an Arduino. Um, and what I'd like to do is to actually just make a light blink on and off uh, using this Arduino. Now, the nice thing about this is I don't actually need to do any circuitry for this because this little light right here on your Arduino board is controllable by the software. So I can just write a piece of uh, programming that will make that blink. So I'm going to start by clicking on code. And when I do, it brings up by default a block programming environment, similar to Scratch, if you're used to that. It also brings in the beginning of a uh, program. And in fact, what the program says is, first, I'd like to set the built-in LED, that is this guy right here, to high, which means on. I'd like to wait one second. I'd like to then set it to low, and then wait one second again. And the way Arduino programs work is that that little piece of code will run over and over and over again until we unplug the Arduino. So let's just leave it as is and see what happens when I start it running. And sure enough, you can see right here that light is blinking on and off once every second. Now, if uh, students want to play around with that a little bit, it's easy enough to do. So let's say that I want it to be off longer than it's on, or on longer than it's off. So maybe I'll set that to two seconds. So it's going to turn the power to high or on, wait two seconds. And then maybe I'll make this really short. I'll make this uh, 0.5 seconds. And again, I can run the program, and you'll see that it's now on longer, and then blinks off for half a second but on for two seconds. And kids can certainly play around with that. But of course, to make this more interesting, I'd like to actually have some circuitry. So why don't we actually put another LED on here? So I'm going to go back to closing my code because I need to build some circuitry. And you can see all of my circuitry is listed here. Um, it tends to be easiest to use a breadboard to um, to build your circuits just because there's no soldering and no plugging fiddly things together. Um, obviously I'd like an LED, so I've got one right here. That's uh, LED, by the way, stands for light emitting diode. And a general rule of thumb when you're using LEDs is this side of it you can see is flatter than this side. The flat side always goes to my ground or always goes to my negative. So I can actually just go ahead and do that right now. I can just click this pin here, and you can see it draws them as being connected. And I can just go ahead and hook that up to ground. Now, typically for a resistor or for a, an LED, you do need to make that LED run through a resistor. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of burning out your circuit or your LED. So I'm going to go ahead and put a resistor um, connecting this pin to this row of pins over here. And I'm going to make that resistor a good uh, resistor for, um, for LEDs. So typically something around 220 ohms will, uh, will work just fine for your circuit. Um, if you're looking through a box of resistors, by the way, that's red, red, brown. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take that row of pins and I'm going to hook it up to pin 7, for example. All right, that is a complete circuit. Um, if I can switch pin 7 on, it should run a current through that resistor, through the positive side of the diode, out the negative side of the diode, and back to ground. So if I go back to my code, right here I can actually change this a little bit. You can see it says set pin to. So what I'd like to do is at the same time that I set my built-in LED to high, I would like to set pin and you can see it's pin number seven, so I'm going to go ahead and hit pin number seven. I'd like to set that one to high. And I would also like to add over here to switch it back off. I'd like to set that pin number seven to low. And sure enough, if I hit start some simulation, let's see what happens. 
and you can see that this is blinking at the same time that this is blinking. Now, if you want to make things look a little bit uh, more interesting, maybe I'll set pin 7 to low at the same time that the built-in goes to high, and of course vice versa. So you can see now in the simulation that every time this one turns off, this one turns on. And this is a circuit that's really easy for the kids to do, but as you can see, there's a lot of opportunities to play and, uh, and work with things in there. Um, within this, there's lots of different uh, opportunities to try different things. If you want to set a pin as being an input, if you want to put a button on there, for example, you can do that. Um, if you want to control different uh, plugins, you can see there's different plugins available here. There's uh, input opportunities, there's uh, places to put notes or comments, um, control things like loops or repeat uh, um, procedures. If I go to math, there's lots of different things like picking random numbers, and I can even work with variables, very much working exactly the same as Scratch. And really all you need to know is that whatever's in here is what's going to go on over and over again. However, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because at some point I would like to be able to build the circuit. Now, if I click export, um, it will actually allow me to download the uh, software to a board piece, but that's not, or a board file, which is actually for printing a printed circuit board. But uh, I would really like to actually take this and run it into the Arduino for real. And the way I do that is if I hit Stop Simulation, I go to Blocks, I can actually go to Blocks and Text as well. And what you'll see is that the code required to make this happen is written for you. And so now I can just highlight that whole piece and copy that. And then I can go into my Arduino IDE that I would normally write my code, paste it in, send it to the board, and I'm done. I hope this gives you a place to start and your kids a place to start playing with the Arduino. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.